My name is Dave Tran, and this is Lux TV, shedding and spreading light for the chiropractic student. We have chiropractor Dr. Judd Nogrady calling from Montgomery, New York. He graduated from Life University in 1996. Dr. Judd, welcome to Lux TV. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. Yeah, so let's get straight to it. So how did you get your start in chiropractic? Um, uh, my start in chiropractic, the simple word is I got hurt. <laughs> but um, getting hurt is not really a good enough answer for Lux TV, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, I used to uh, run a scrap metal business and garbage business. And um, I was carrying a bathtub down the stairs backwards with two guys on one side and me on the other side. And the guys on the top part of the stairs tripped. And when they tripped, um, I fell down. They dropped the tub and I fell down the stairs with the tub on top of me. And I went down basically like two flights of stairs with a bathtub on top of me. Um, needless to say, uh, I was hurt. At that time, I never had heard the word chiropractic, so I wasn't against chiropractic whatsoever. I wasn't for it or against it in any way. I just never even heard of it. I went to the emergency room first, and they, uh, they were nice there. They were pleasant people. They just didn't have the knowledge to get me back together again. And uh, from there, I saw probably orthopedists and neurologists and all sorts of metologists for probably almost uh, 18 months to two years. Um, and I'd love to say that I went to the chiropractor and got cured immediately and felt perfect. I would love to add that, but that's not what happened. <laughs> what happened is I went to a chiropractor, and I went to a chiropractor who was like a mixed chiropractor. Mm -hmm. And uh, he put me on a metcasonilator and a stretchy table and, uh, and a massage table. And in fact, I did not get better. I got worse. I stuck with that chiropractor for a little while. Then I went to another chiropractor. And uh, it was the same thing. He, I think he wanted to rub carrot sticks on me. <laughs> and I got worse again, basically of not working, not moving, you know, almost three years not functioning. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like the most unbelievable coincidence in the entire world. But my, my older brother, who's Adam, um, had been told by my uncle, who's a medical doctor, to become a chiropractor. And it was the upcoming field to go into. So my brother was going to chiropractic college in Logan, at Logan Chiropractic College out in Missouri. Mm -hmm. So my brother had been following my, um, my lack of progress, you know, through calling me. And back in those days, we didn't have Skype and we didn't have cell phones. So, I, you know, he called a landline at home every once in a while. They asked my mother how I was doing and she kept saying worse. So my brother got a hold of me and he said that I should come to the very famous Logan Chiropractic College up in Missouri because they were the specialists in spinal pain. You know, they would, they would definitely cure my condition. So at that time, I couldn't sit down and I couldn't stand up for more than a couple hours straight. So the prospect of getting to Missouri, which is 2,000 miles from my home, was, was daunting to say the least. So what we did was we cleaned out the back of a truck that I previously used to haul garbage, and we put a mattress in the back of that truck, and I laid on that mattress, and somebody drove me out to Missouri. Oh, wow. And uh, so we got to Missouri, and I went to the famous Logan Chiropractic Clinic, and they took x-rays of me and told me that my spine was in too bad a condition that they couldn't help me. What? And so, yep, that's exactly what happened. I went to the famous Logan Clinic. Now, this is in the, this is the abbreviated version of this is in Cast to be Chiropractors. And um, I didn't talk about Logan because we didn't want to slam every chiropractic institution there, but this is exactly what happened. <laughs> so when I, well, to say I was unhappy is to say the least. So I did get, and Logan finally, uh, a student snuck me into the clinic, which is safe. People don't think they were sneaking back then. They're still sneaking, same thing. And he was not what I would call a chiropractor, but he, he thought he could really help my spine. So he put me on a, a, a flexion distraction table, a Cox flexion distraction table. I don't know if they even make those anymore. Yeah. And uh, I didn't get better, but for the first time in a long time, I could at least move. Mm -hmm. You know, I could sit down a little bit. I actually drove the truck a little bit on the way home. So I went back to New York again, figuring that, okay, I was definitely doomed. I'd been to the best supposedly the best pain clinic in the entire world for spinal pain, and they had turned me down. And some student had, like, snuck me in at the middle of the night with a candle to put me on this flexion table. And at that point, I was actually going to buy a Cox flexion distraction table and to ask one of my neighbors to learn how to do it. <laughs> um, so I pretty much was resigned to being doomed forever. And now this is – at that time, my brother had graduated from Logan Chiropractic College, and he was thoroughly disappointed with what he learned there as far as being a chiropractor. He said he got a great medical uh, education, but he really didn't know enough to be a medical doctor. And he really didn't know enough to be a chiropractor. And he had no idea what he was doing. And he didn't want to be a pain guy. It's not what he wanted. 
Uh, he ran into a straight chiropractor, and we'll talk about his name later. And that straight chiropractor introduced me to another straight chiropractor named Dr. Paul Pru. And Dr. Paul Pru adjusted me with a toggle adjustment. And let's just say that's where it all started, right then and there. I got off that table after one toggle adjustment, and I said, uh, I think I'm going to go to chiropractic college. Yeah, that's amazing. Like, uh, a totally amazing story there. And, and like you kind of mentioned it a little bit ago about um, the book that you uh, co-wrote called The Cast to Be Chiropractors. And can you explain what the title means? Yeah, sure. I'm um, not to be. I, I'm such a hot shot, but I have two books now, and uh, one is Cast to Be Chiropractors with Dr. Liam Schubel, and the other is Irene Gold, Gold: A Lifetime in Love and Chiropractic. And in Cast to Be Chiropractors, cast means to be cast is like a die, and um, a die is something they use when they do medical works. My grandfather owned a company called Accurate Casting. Accurate casting made bronze figures. And before you poured the bronze or brass figure, you'd actually make a cast, a metal cast, that you could pour the metal into. So mm -hmm. kind of as a tribute to my grandfather, who was kind of the greatest guy ever. Yeah. And uh, his maxim was always do the best you can so the next guy along can have an easier time. So the next guy can have a better life. And that's kind of a chiropractic idea in that you know, the reason we preserve this thing is not for ourselves, it's for the next person. And so cast casting or accurate casting is the process of making a metal die. And I always feel like chiropractors are kind of, we're kind of like stamped. Chiropractors are people who are really, either they get it, chiropractors either really get it and they're stamped into a, a, a casted die or they don't get it and they just flutter around their whole career. That's how they, uh, that's how the title cast to be chiropractors is made. Yeah. And you know, and the, the story kind of goes through, um, the, uh, like your life as well as Liam's life too. And uh, it's a great story. And, and if uh, people don't. Uh, oh, Liam? Oh, oh, you mean Liam Schubel, that guy? <laughs> yeah, he's in the book too. We, yeah. we stuck him in there just as a, as a like a footnote. A very, a footnote very, very thin chapters. but A little, little thin chapter on Schubel. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and then you uh, mentioned your other book that you uh, co-wrote as well too. Um, so could you talk about how the Gold family has impacted your life? Okay. Well, when I first started, uh, Irene Gold, um, without Irene Gold, I would never be a chiropractor. I'd be a chiropractor without a license. Um, I used Irene Gold for part one, part two, part three, and a little bit of part four. Um, but I would never even, I would have dropped out of chiropractic college had I not, the deal I made with myself was that when I had to take part one, I'm pretty hardcore about making a goal. And I said, if I didn't pass part one the first time, I was quitting. I was dropping out. I had no, that was it. So, that doesn't mean I took part one lightly. It means I studied for 10 weeks for part one to make sure that I passed every part. Um, back when I was going to college, when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, <laughs> they didn't prepare us for the boards at all. They told us the boards was complete nonsense and that, you know, that for, to prepare for the boards that we should just use Irene Gold. So I actually contacted Irene Gold way before the board review and asked her what I should do. And she gave me some tips to start studying before the board review. And the first day of the board review, I sat in the front, right in front of her, and I mentioned to her that I wasn't a great student and that I had to pass unless bad things were going to happen. And she just told me, you, you watch everything I say and do everything I do and study everything I give you, and I guarantee you'll pass. Well, that's my first meeting with the Gold family. Now, nothing against Reggie Gold, but I didn't know anything about him whatsoever except that he was married to Irene. <laughs> I didn't know that he spoke. I never heard him speak. Nothing. But when I was asked to write Irene Gold's book and Reggie Gold's book, because the book is not just about Reggie, it's Irene and Reggie, mm -hmm. I had to do a lot of research on Reggie Gold. So I got a lot of the information from Irene, but I didn't want to be uh, totally biased. You know, you can't get a real good book just from someone's wife. He would have been a, an angel floating around with wings. <laughs> so I interviewed a lot of people. Mm. And on interviewing people, what I learned is that Reggie Gold was probably the greatest influence in my life in chiropractic without ever meeting him. And how that is is because two people changed my life in chiropractic. One was named Jay Kaufman, Dr. Jay. And Jay is the chiropractor who met my brother when my brother graduated Logan and completely changed him. And Jay didn't have a, an hour conversation with my brother. He spent like 15 hours with him one day alone, straight through breakfast, lunch, and dinner, going over straight chiropractor, had him sleep over, come back the next week and just keep going over it and help them open his office. So, and Jay Kaufman, as it turns out, uh, Reggie Gold had a very famous clinic and Jay Kaufman used to drive the bus that brought the patients to the clinic as a chiropractic student, as a new chiropractor. 
So Jay Kaufman is probably the greatest transformation of Judd O'Grady, even though he never talked to me. He talked to my brother because my brother made me a straight chiropractor. And number two, Reggie Gold had his very, very famous meetings at his house where he used to have 100 to 300 chiropractors would show up in his house and hear him speak, a solo speaker. And one of those chiropractors was Dr. Paul Prue, who got turned on to being a straight chiropractor by Reggie Gold. And Paul Prue gave me my first adjustment. Now, these two things are things I never knew until I read the, I started writing the book about Reggie Gold. So how Reggie impacted me personally, one-on-one, -on -one, and the answer is not at all. But through uh, uh, his works, 100%. Mm. And now I have listened to everything Reggie Gold has ever said that's been recorded and read everything that he's ever wrote. So I'm not an authority on Reggie Gold, but I've certainly maybe read or heard more than most people. Exactly. Yeah, I'm actually going through uh, Reggie's uh, the philosophy right now. And it's probably like the second time I'm going through it with a new ear. And uh, it's, uh, I always grab, get some, something amazing out of it for sure. Yeah. I would say Reggie's, you know, his, I think what he'd like to be known as his big contribution to chiropractic is that there's basically the objective straight, uh, traditional straight. And Reggie took people that were traditional. And I, listen, I'm sure we'll get a thousand phone calls on uh, Lux TV here, a thousand people saying that's not what it is, but the traditional stage straight, um, and Paul Prue was a traditional straight at first. He graduated uh, upper cervical only with B.J. Palmer, upper cervical toggle um, from, uh, from the B.J. Palmer Clinic. And what he was kind of trained is that, is that our goal was to cure people and that people came in with certain conditions and chiropractic care cured conditions and that it was dis-ease, but it was still a condition model. Person came in with headaches, we were the headache doctor. Person came in with, the, as Dr. Sid would say, African drip and diabetes that you would cure the African drip and diabetes. <laughs> and Reggie took us from that traditional straight to the objective straight. And the objective straight was that it wasn't merely, merely a cure-all. It wasn't a cure-all at all. It was a way to enhance life in everybody. Mm -hmm. And there is people uh, practicing traditional straight, and I have not, uh, congratulations, and I love them. And there's people practicing objective straight. I think there's room for both, but I think that's what Reggie's real, um, his real emphasis in life was is to, to bring it in his mind to elevate chiropractic from just being a, a cure to being something that enhanced the life of all people on the planet. Yeah. And, you know, they call Reggie Gold the, the communicator of chiropractic. And, you know, and like communication is one of the key foundations of Schubel Vision. And I know that you've been traveling all, of, all over the United States, going to all the different campuses and stuff like that, um, and, and bringing Schubel Vision to um, all the students and all the uh, local chiropractors as well, too. So could you talk about um, Shubal Vision a little bit? Sure. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Shubal Vision because Shubal would have my head if I didn't at least talk about <laughs> Shubal Vision. Shubal Vision, we have one coming October 10th and 11th in San Francisco. October 10th and 11th in San Francisco. And you can check it out on www.shubalvisionworldwide.com. Um, and the Shubal Vision really is about learning how to communicate chiropractic. We have, it's a seminar that it's all nuts and bolts, take home stuff, which is that every speaker is only trying to give information that you can actually use to communicate the chiropractic message to your clients, to people, and actually to yourself, just to get yourself in the right head. In that we've had a lot of different people from different philosophies taking the, uh, the supervision seminar, and most of them there because they want to see if they can get new clients. Um, and Schubel Vision is really based on communicating not the chiropractic philosophy only, but chiropractic to people, to clients, to large audiences, to small audiences, you know, to everything. That's what Schubel Vision is really all about. Yeah, and that's great. Um, and lastly, what would be your greatest advice for students? Okay, my greatest advice for students. Hmm. Single students or married students, David? <laughs> um, well, at the moment, I'm single. Uh, okay, well, or, or, single or, students. Or, or I'm I, not married. I, so. <laughs> okay, well, David Tran, uh, all you ladies looking out there, uh, you never know. Uh, there he is. He's good looking. He's single. And he's interested in chiropractic. I like it. Um, my greatest advice for a single student would be to make sure that whoever you get with in life is on the same mission you are to helping people in chiropractic. Hmm. Because... As a financial advice, if you don't like lovey-dovey stuff or emotion, if you, if you want to have a dead emotional life and that doesn't mean anything to you, then don't worry about your partner. Look at it as a business, transfer, as a business prospect. 
that nothing can cost you more money than a failed relationship later on down the line. Mm. That you may work for 20 years and then give 50% of everything you made to somebody else. And pay forever, especially if you're out in California or out west. The, the divorce laws out there are really rugged. So my first advice is to make sure that who's ever on this mission with you is steeped and is into chiropractic as much as you are. And if they're not a chiropractor, not into chiropractic, at least at the very least they do is they support you 100%. Mm -hmm. Now, for you like me who are more of an emotional guy and you're not worried about the finance as much, oh, who the heck wants to be stuck with someone they hate for the rest of their lives? <laughs> so the most important thing you can do is find an appropriate mate that you're on the same path. Otherwise, your life becomes pretty bleak and it becomes bleak emotionally and then it becomes horribly uh, financially. Yes. The second advice I have for a chiropractic student, married or not, is to find the niche you want to be in in chiropractic. I'm not against somebody. If someone is like a spinal pain specialist, I'd like to meet them because I'd love to have some relief for what I've got going on. But if you're a spinal pain uh, specialist, then you don't come 20 years later and wonder why you don't see children. Um, if you want to be a sports chiropractor, I think that's the greatest thing too. But then don't wonder why you're not seeing you know, certain types of clients in your office. If you want to be a personal injury chiropractor, for me, none of these things really ring a bell. But I think you have to find there's so many ways to be very, very, very successful in chiropractic. Why don't you find a niche in chiropractic that you like and then go for it? But nothing makes me crazy. I have people call me now all the time because we're doing the Shuba Visions saying, hey, I'm not really satisfied in my chiropractic career. I'm not seeing enough uh, women and kids. I always wanted to see women and kids. And the first thing this old dinosaur does is I go to the web and I look at their website. Mm -hmm. And their website says personal injury workers comp, no fault. Well, there's a reason you're not seeing kids, you knucklehead, because you're a no-fault workers' comp personal injury chiropractor. So I don't have a problem with a person doing something else in chiropractic. I'm not against them. I'm just why don't you figure out what you want to do in chiropractic and be the best at it. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a, I, I do adjust some animals, but I'm not predominantly animals. But I mean, imagine if I was complaining to David Tran saying, hey, I'm not seeing enough horses in my office. <laughs> well, of course you're not seeing horses, no, Grady. You're not a horse doctor. You're not a horse chiropractor. Uh, and my second piece of advice, that I'm, I'm famous for being long-winded, not short, short answers, <laughs> is that if you want a more medical idea, why don't you go to school or go back to school for nursing or a physician's assistant? There's a whole lot of people graduating and then complaining they're not really medical enough. And what you have to understand is chiropractic is not medical. It's not like medicine. It's completely different. We're not looking to be more like medicine. So a lot of people, they get out and they want to be like more like a medical person. And I always am curious why the heck they went to school to be a chiropractor to change it. Mm -hmm. There's so many avenues into the field of medicine between nursing, osteopathy, physician's assistant. I mean, and that, we're going to just name a couple. I mean, there is an EMT. There is so many things you can do to become like medicine that are easier than chiropractic. So I'm always curious as people who go to chiropractic colleges – and then want to become more medical. Mm -hmm. So if you're not going to get into chiropractic 100%, do something else. Save us all a lot of aggravation and fighting in the hallways, okay, and beating each other up later. And, and just do something else instead of my profession. Exactly. And uh, the last thing, I guess, my, my advice, David, don't worry, I'm getting done, <laughs> is that don't be into chiropractic. There's a lot of chiropractors I call them like Monday, Wednesday, Friday chiropractors. And I don't practice a lot, but chiropractic is in me. I'm into chiropractic 100%. Where I talk about chiropractic, we work about chiropractic, my wife and I, every single day, we, we discuss chiropractic. Um, so if you're not into chiropractic like a fanatic, I think you're not going to have a good time in chiropractic. Chiropractic seems to draw David here and I here at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, him <laughs> 7 o'clock in the morning, right, yes. on, uh, on our computers talking about chiropractic. Now, you have to be pretty fanatical to be a student interviewing doctors about chiropractic. <laughs> so the true success in chiropractic is that when it breeds, we're breeding, David, don't tell anybody, it breeds <laughs> the fanatics. If you're not fanatical about the chiropractic philosophy and the art and the science of chiropractic now as a student, you may be in trouble. Mm. Because if you want to be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday guy, not really interested except I'm getting my paycheck, you're, you may be in the wrong profession. Because this is not a profession that gets people who are usually halfway in. People who are halfway in are three quarters out. And people who are three quarters out or 100 percent out within two or three years of, of graduating. So my greatest advice is get with someone who's into chiropractic, get yourself into chiropractic, and find out what you want to be in chiropractic. And if it turns out it's not what you want to be, go somewhere else and leave us all alone. Exactly. Dr. Judd, thank you so much for sharing your light with us today. 
If you want some more information or want to connect with Dr. Jed directly, check out the links below. Every week I will be uploading a new interview with another leader in the chiropractic profession. If you like this video, please share with your classmates, give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. My name is Dave Train, and this is Lux TV, shedding and spreading light for the chiropractic students. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much.